Hey everyone, this is Steve Good and Yuri Cataldo. Welcome back to our, another episode of The Coin Chat. Uh, Steve, it's always good to see you again. How are you doing? Fine. I decided to plant myself in an aquarium for our, our YouTube viewers, just for randomness today, you know? I love it. I love it. That's great. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful view. It's actually very relaxing now to well, look at to stare at you. I kind of, I'm kind of feeling like I need relaxing after seeing the news about the My Heritage website and the DNA data being hacked. 98 million people affected or something ridiculous. It's like, what? Wow. So, so tell me more about that. Because I've always been, I've always been leery about letting companies now have access to my DNA because of that exact issue. And yeah. I thought I would be a tinfoil hat person, but like, so what actually happened? Well, I mean, it's not entirely clear. I mean, you know, they the, the news is just sort of just come out yesterday, just talking about the fact that there's been, as they said, 92 million plus accounts where the the site, you know, their websites or their applications were hacked, and um, the breach took place. Actually, it took place in October of last year in 2017, um, and um, you know, I guess there was access to both back backward compatible to stealing all the passwords as well as, I guess, in theory, getting access to some of the DNA data that people have actually had tests run and then published into the site, which were, of course, meant only for themselves and their family. But yeah. this is a classic example of why we need crypto and, well, not crypto, but blockchain and the whole idea of being able to secure our own data control and own our own data and you know storing it remotely on a database is just classic let's just hack and steal and you know no one can really stop it but at least with crypto we've got a level of encryption a level of call it trust or a trustless environment where you know you're able to store what you want to store and keep what you want to keep and make public what you want to make public and not what you don't. Mm -hmm. And this is just another example. You know, you had the Facebook analytics thing a few months ago on this. I mean, there's perfectly classic examples of why we need to have secure and private data, which of course is not necessarily what the governments want, but my God, it's like, this just really upsets me seeing this kind of thing because it affects so many people. And, and it's sad because it shouldn't happen at all. And how can we trust companies when they can't even manage their own data? Mm -hmm. already no. right exactly no especially i was so i was at an event last night that showcased a lot of health startups and it's amazing what's happening now with like devices and stuff that can track um you know your red your red white blood cell count different minerals in your body um and what potentially could ail you so the good side of that is like amazing because you can talk to your doctor and say you know and have them monitor through blowing into a device or just having this actually this um, one device had a bunch of tiny cameras that could just pierce through your skin uh, visually to look at like your white blood cells. Absolutely amazing. Cool. But the scary, scary part of that is then if you're not securing that data, what happens if, again, it falls into the wrong kind of hands or like insurance companies somehow get access to this and can now charge rates versus, you know, depending on these, you know, ailments that they think you may have 10 years from now. Yeah. So it's, it's, well, uh, it's this is actually amazing. the good thing about blockchain now. I'm, I'm starting to see more examples of industry-specific blockchain functions or features or, or companies. So I've come mm -hmm. across a, a few recent ones, you know, that were focusing on things around pharma, uh, medical data, medical records, privacy around the medical industry. So it's suddenly become a hot topic, and I, I'm not yeah. sure quite how it happens that they all come to the same conclusion at the same time, or you just hear about them all at once, or maybe it's my awareness of it, so I'm scanning it, but I mean, I've had a few different people mail me different projects saying, have you seen this one, have you seen that one, not convinced about this, not convinced about that, and you know, two of the ones that I've come across, interestingly, they have one common problem, which is um, a problem and solution, right? So the, 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 the problem part is, people running the companies are medical people themselves, who, yeah know the medical industry, who know uh, scientific things. But the downside is there's nobody leading the company who knows a damn thing about technology or blockchain. 
And sometimes their teams have such a lack of that technology and blockchain in there that the biggest right. question is, who's going to run this company really? <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, it's like it's there's a lot of companies I, I see and work with similar kind of thing. Like the engineers are running it, which is fantastic. But then after a certain point, you can't have the engineers run it if they don't understand the other fund fundamentals of it. Yeah, I mean, and so don't, like, get, don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating 23 year olds <laughs> of which, you know, 95% of these crypto companies are being right. more equipped because I could, I could argue the same thing about, you know, some of the banking and, and loans and payment platforms that have come out over the last year, which was where things started and initially where, you know, one project said, oh, we're going to launch a bank. And you're looking at the 24 year old going, uh, what do you know about banking exactly? I spent 20 years right. in the banking industry and I'm no expert. And right. they're talking like they know more than I do. And I'm thinking, you don't know anything, mate. <laughs> It's well. It's a good reminder that teams just need to diversify the the founders on there and the expertise. Like it's it's great to have a lot of smart people in the room with you, bringing in all these fantastic ideas, so you have a well rounded team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting because yeah. one of the other things I when I've spoken to some ICOs recently, what I'll find is this is a classic one, right? Oh, let's just mm -hmm. throw twenty advisors on the team, and you're thinking, who has time to talk <laughs> to twenty advisors? And when you actually look at the advisors, you realize that they themselves don't even realize what they've got. What they've mm -hmm. got, which is really interesting, is they've got two types of people. They've got industry experts, mm -hmm. and then they've got ICO stroke blockchain advisors. Now, if you split the two into two parts, and you can say, look, we've got five people here who are experts in pharma, travel, medical, banking, whatever, that are actually sponsoring the project in one way, or not sponsoring, but industry advising the project in one way or another. I think that's great if you can highlight yeah. that because it says we've got people who can actually help us get inroads into the industry, who can help us figure things out and know what's going on in the industry and separate that from, you know, your normal blockchain advisors like what I do or people that do marketing or smart contract advisory or technical stuff like our friend Joe, who's been on the yeah. channel a few times. So there's, to me, that's a logical approach, but most people don't quite figure that one out. And I'm usually the one telling them, hey, we want to split this in two so it doesn't look like you have so many advisors because nobody has time to deal with that many people. Right. But if you run them right. in panels or councils, of course, you know, get your council of elders who know the industry on the line together and you can achieve a lot. But needless <laughs> I, to say, I like that yeah. idea. I love that idea of like having a council of elders. That sounds actually brilliant of like, hey, we have a problem. Let's get the council of elders. Well, so, you know, when we ever get, if we ever get around to launching our turkey coin, you have to question now, who would be the council of elders for a turkey coin? Would you need to like butter, what's the name of that turkey company in the US? B Butterball. Butterball, right. So you need someone from Butterball on the, on the advisory, you know, elders. Definitely. You know. <laughs> and there's a German, tur there's a couple of German turkey companies. So we just need to get a couple of these really smart turkey guys and, then you'll have your council of elders that all know about the turkey industry. <laughs> <laughs> to be added on there. I, I love it. Um, I love it. Wait, I've got so, the wrong so, background image of uh, aquariums and turtles because I was trying to go a bit underground or underwater just to hide away from all the DNA noise. But <laughs> right. I, I've ended up talking about turkeys. Made my background image is all wrong today. <laughs> That's all right. Mine is this nebulous. Technically, it's. Um, oh, what Rick? is that? Well, it's. it's um, Oh, it came. Uh, sugar cane. It's it's a, a composite sugar cane that they have taken and like slammed together. It's now a decorative piece in a lot of offices, but it's uh, that's what it really is. So that's what I have behind me. Well, if you had gorillas in the room, they'd be eating the wall. They totally would. Um, minus you know, whatever. You know, gorillas love eating sugar cane. It's too, minus whatever stuff they put on. So not sugar cane. I'm sorry. They like bamboo. I, I strike that. On my mistake. Right. No, gorillas <laughs> like bamboo. And they like bamboo because it's got lots of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. Not like I should know anything about this, but I went gorilla trekking once years ago. And yeah, uh, yeah. and when, you, when we were hiking through a, a bamboo forest, you know, all the, the younger baby gorillas were eating the bamboo. And of course, like children, you eat candy, they go crazy. Well, guess what baby gorillas do? Bouncing off walls, they're flipping upside yeah. down, they're rolling on the ground, climbing up trees and jumping down and swinging off vines. It's like... Complete total insanity. <laughs> we've we've diverged completely from anything about crypto, and we're talking about gorillas <laughs> eating bamboo. And I thought that was sugarcane for 
So we, we have, we have. Well, so so to bring it slightly around, I, did you hear about Fidelity uh, quietly building their own cryptocurrency exchange? No. So they're doing it. They so have is, an this is the counter account. response to the Poloniex circle thing that Goldman Sachs did? They're it panicking might be. like, oh my God, we got to get in now? This, this, so this literally came out, what's, yeah, June, uh, four o'clock. So, wow. Actually, so this article came out 10 minutes ago. So you probably would not have heard. Aren't it. you, Mr. In the Know now? That I should just like, I am. hand the baton over to you <laughs> if these run. <laughs> it just so happened that I was checking my email at the same time. So uh, Fidelity, which is based in Boston, has just advertised a few positions. Like, so DevOps system engineer that's going to help them deploy digital assets on a public and private cloud. They're also looking for, uh, let's see here, uh, do, 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 as I'm reading this in real time right now. So there's a couple other, oh, I can't find it right now. So there's, there's a few other positions they actually just advertised. What, what kind um, of an exchange is it going to be? It doesn't, so this article is a little dodgy on that part. Um, here we go. It's not clear what the exchange will be or when it will be made available on their platform or whether or not it will exist entirely separate of the, the company. So it's, it's still like way up in the air, but apparently because they've been putting out job, app, or job postings for DevOps, it has really uh, piqued a lot of people's attention. So um, now you're just gonna make sure you know who it was that took the job and then friend them on LinkedIn. Definitely, because they're going to be in Boston. So I'll actually have to keep an eye out for that. Um, <laughs> Sneaky little <laughs> bastard. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, Without you Fidelity, like, we're coming for you. We're going to find out what you're up to. We know how to find out. <laughs> that's right. We're going to keep things in the loop. <laughs> All right. So to swing back around then, today's topic uh, about EOS, whether or not that is the next in class Ethereum, better than Ethereum, or huge dumpster fire. I thought that'd be a good comment. Do we get to vote on this one? Yes, I think we do. <laughs> when do we vote? At the beginning or the end? We can vote now if you want to. Which one are, are you dumpster fire or are you... So this is like um, Siskel and Ebert, the guys that used to do these movie reviews, right? Where they used to do thumbs right. up and thumbs down. Two thumbs up, two thumbs down. We can yeah, do so that I'm giving EOS a thumbs down on this. I just think the whole thing's just a big shamble. Well, I'm, I, I'm also calling it a huge dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a token that's just been out there for a while. It's it's just it has no value other than right. a token on an exchange they they launch a platform they're now paying people publicly to I mean, you, I mean, you heard one guy made 120 grand in a week finding bugs and I, I i think if i heard the story correctly he found one bug and then they started paying him to find the rest and he found like and they were he found 12 bugs they paid him 10 grand a bug or something yes wait so so let's before we get into like that, that let's yeah. let's back it up what is so um, if anybody did watch the, the John Oliver special, well, John Oliver show about, I think it was like February or, or March, he did touch on EOS a little bit just because there was a, a, a section about uh, the presentation and kind of what they were doing. And So we'll, uh, we'll have to put the link we'll to that in the description down below in, yes. the, in the YouTube channel so people can yeah. click on yeah, that yeah. separately. So I'll leave that one for you to find it. <laughs> okay, I will. I will add that one in. So <laughs> before we get into that, before we get into that, though, so um, so what is EOS supposed to be doing? Like, you're what is their me ultimate? Goal? Me. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm asking you on this one. Just well, I mean, I mean, with, as far as I understand, EOS is supposed to be a, like a smart contract stroke platform competitor. So, right. You know, when we when we went back to kind of one of the early episodes of different types of coins, we talked about coins that are just value like Bitcoin, coins that are platforms like. Ethereum, Waves, Lisk, Cardano, Neo, and now EOS. And then there's mm -hmm. all the rest of the coins out there that have some sort of utility value or function for industry sectors like medical or privacy data or banking or whatever. So yeah. EOS falls into the platform space. Uh, okay. But so far, I would argue that you can't really put them in the platform space uh, since all they are is a coin with some intrinsic or non-intrinsic value of around right. 14 bucks, which is pretty much what they were before they did the ICO again. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it's a platform of sorts to, and I, I haven't, to be honest, I have, it's one of these projects I have not actually followed very much and had yeah. no real interest in, 
other than just kind of seeing it and watching what they're doing. But I always felt like they were a bit of a copycat of Ether. So I didn't really see the, you know, and I've looked at their website and I've looked at their white paper and I've been kind of like, um, so what? We've already got Ether, Ether works, what's the problem? And it's yeah, very effective. Yeah. It works really, really well. There's all sorts of crazy cool things you can do with smart contracts that most people don't even know about. So, you know, yes, good to have competitors, but we've got a few already, so why do we need another one? Yeah, I, so what I find puzzling about their project is so, so they entered their ICO without a completed project. Without, they didn't actually write any code until I believe it was like three months ago. Oh, so, yeah. And I, right. as far as I know, so they've released <laughs> whatever, they finished their ICO and they've raised a lot of money um, because they're really good at raising money. And, and from what I understand, the, there was some controversy that there was, um, that the, one of the founders was doing, like constantly debating people and that helped raise their profile, which got them more money. Um, but okay, so they got a, them more money. Let me just say one thing about that. Did you yeah. know, did you know, 50% yes. of EOS coins are held by, wait for it, 10 people. Wait, so wait, seriously, 10 people hold 50% of their coins? Yes. So how is, so they're not decentralized at all then? They are like the epitome of centralized. Well, most ICOs are selling 50 plus percent of their coins up to 80% of their coins. And yeah, yeah. here we're looking at 50% of the tokens are owned by 10, per, 10 people. This is, like the, this is like basically a mirror of the real world of money. It's like, this yeah. is sick, this is wrong. This is not a decentralized consensus-based product at all. No. If you look at it from the standpoint of token distribution, this is just like 10, 10 votes could pretty much decide the entire future of EOS. Thank you very much, but why do I want to be part of something like that? It, just, it completely contradicts and undermines the whole point of consensus. And we've talked a lot about the whole point of creating decentralized autonomous organizations, places where we can propose things, we can vote on things, we can create an environment that's a global place where we can also participate. And yeah. that, when I found that out today, I was really upset about that one. Actually, my wife was the one that spotted it and she, she told me about it and she showed me the article and I was like, oh, this yeah. is ridiculous. That's, so it's, so it seems like this entire project is a lot of hype with very little behind it, but yet I still, I hear so much about it and there are people who, are smart who were like up until a week ago were like get in make sure you're buying it right now how and did so how you do, no i did not i stayed and neither did and, i and yeah we've, got, it, it, we've got our like, whatsapp yeah. private group of friends that we you know interact with and talk about crypto stuff with just for fun and yeah. there was a lot of hype in there about the whole thing and i just sat there watching it like going i don't get it <laughs> that's what I, I wanted to post like i don't guys i don't get it can please somebody explain it to me because i don't everything i'm reading about i see is like red flag after red flag yeah i don't i don't get it so how i guess from a technical perspective because that is, is the only way we can really look at this like technically when you look at the the trading charts how does that look well uh it, it looks kind of like the price back in march <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I mean, look, if you, if you've just raised, if you've just raised a billion dollars and you're flipping your token from one coin into another, but you're keeping it as EOS, whatever you're doing. Yeah. If you raise that much money, you would expect that the token from a, from a chart perspective would do something. Guess what? It did. It popped up. Yeah. Coins were distributed. And then there was a hell of a lot of selling and it popped right back down. So I'm just going to swap over to a screen that can look at it. And basically okay. what I can see on trading view was that it got to a high of around 20, let's say 22, I can't see exactly on this particular chart, but it's, it's kind of settled back into a range between 13.30 and 14.30. And before that, it was trading around, you know, eight to 10 bucks. But back in February, it was trading around $10 or so. So it's not like, I mean, okay, okay, fine. It's up 30% from, you know, 10 to 13 bucks, fine. But I mean, that's not really a big move from February to present day, considering that this whole thing just happened. I was expecting a much more significant move where it would have been on an uptrend and there would be just tons of buying and tons of buying and movement, movement, movement. And actually it popped up, came right back down, 
and it's just kind of sitting between 13 and 14. Now, one thing I'll say on the technical chart side of things is when I look at November, you know, from using a one year chart, and I'm just looking at a chart where it's November going to present day, and I can kind of roughly see that, you know, 13 is around the rough support line, you kind of what they expect. There are some technical analysis that says there's a number of indicators like RSI and stochastics uh, or moving averages that are all saying we're kind of bouncing on that support line and around 13, 13 and a half was where you needed to be. And then once it hit that, it's their buy signals all over the place because of the, the November to present day support line. Mm -hmm. But that's just pure technical, you know, the long, the, the long term, November to present, not very long term. But the November to present day has an uptrend. Uh, in fact, pretty much all coins, you'll, as you can argue, have an uptrend because they all started at zero, right? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> but there, I mean, you know, arguably there's some sort of an uptrend in the coin, but it's not like, wow, I mean, this is going crazy. This is not going to the moon. And I think a lot of people that were EOS big supporters are going to probably, you know, troll us for this particular video and saying, how dare you not be EOS supporters? What are you missing? And I'll just say back, tell us what we're missing. If, if yes. there's something we're missing, tell us because, you know, the technical chart is okay, but it's not going to the moon. It has a support at 13, but there's nothing, there's no major technical indicators that are telling me it's going to 18 or 25 or 30 and settling up there right now. I don't see anything that tells me that. So, um, so I'll let me flip it back over to you and you, Yuri, talk fundamentals, you know, the business value, the, the prop business proposition, what, what does it look like on that side of it to you? So I, so what they have done, which is absolutely fascinating is that they have created a really flashy looking white paper uh, with a very impressive sales pitch and an experienced team behind it. But what you have, if you buy EOS now is essentially gambling. So they have, they have no product. They have created a coin that actually has zero value that doesn't actually do anything. So, all they are is a flashy white paper. So other than that, I, like, I'm not even gonna read their business plan because I don't even think they know how to, what it is. It's funny, if, if you actually go back and watch the Jean Oliver report on it, um, under like technical analysis of like what they're gonna do, they actually wrote, we're working on it. Like they, as of like two months ago, they didn't even know what they were going to do with this project and like put that as a question mark on their website. So this is just what a big money play with big names and big money yes. that are basically just hyping it for the sake of hyping it. So is this like the ultimate pump and dump, um, you know, Howie, the Howie, uh, what's it called? The Howie test website oh. from the SEC, whatever it was. Yes, yes, yes. This is a bad example of what a, what, what a scam looks like. Are they a scam or are they a real project that actually is doing something, but they just don't have a product and they don't have an MVP because... 2018 is the year that we're supposed to have real products and MVPs or minimum viable products or have prototypes or working products already out the door, not, oh, we will eventually build something other than copying Ethereum's code base and then right. doing something with that. You yeah, know. it's a, this is a weird example or like the best example of a company who's trying to get funding prior to actually having a product. Like they have a good idea, maybe a good idea, but they're like, and they've raised a ton of money, which is even more fascinating behind it. So it's, you know, it's, it's hard to tell if this is going to succeed or not, because now they've got a lot of funding behind it. Yeah, but so you know the game, right? If big money is in, then another yeah. big money follows behind it just because they don't want to be, it's FOMO. Yeah. It's, you know, this is classic FOMO. That. I don't want to miss out. So, hey, if, you know, and I won't name the names, but if, you know, if, if person X is in there and then person Y is in there and they're both big plays, venture capital guys, then, yeah. you know, something X capital and something X fund is going to say, well, wait a minute, you know, this looks like a good one. If these guys are in it, they know what they're doing, that we want to be a part of it. And then there's all this money flying in. And maybe those are the 10 people that have 50%. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But then what's kind of the point of the whole thing if it's, you know, 10 holders holding half the coins? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't even know what to say about this one. It's, it's got a lot of bugs in it. There's still, again, like you mentioned before, they had one bounty hunter program guy who made $120,000 finding holes in their bugs recently, like in the last like week, yeah. which is not what you want to hear when they, they've already technically released their product. Like 
this should have been a long time ago. And there was another, it's like two weeks ago, I read a report, I forgot who, like a, a nonprofit um, company who also does this thing, like released this big report about a lot of holes in their, it was like their nodes, um, there's something to do with their nodes, but there was like another huge hole in their software. So you're like, you're releasing the software and now there are lots of people coming out saying that there are bugs and holes. This does not like make anybody feel safe and comfortable beyond, again, the, their fantastic marketing hype. You have to give them credit for that because they did a great job on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, well done for the marketing and raising the money. Yeah. Now let's see where this really goes. I guess this is one of those topics that of course you know now they're in the top 10 crypto market cap and we need to just track this one and do a follow-up in a couple months time and say so how did eos do in terms of the stock charts there we're, we're, we're right now we're we're saying it's 14 dollars today as yeah. of you know 6th of june 2018 so we were very clear about exactly what it is on this episode and now we can go back to you know go back and look at it six months from now and say are they at 28 or 30 or 50 or 100? Or, or do they have a product? Are they at six? Do they, yeah. do they have a product? What's the chart yeah. look like then? And it'll be very, very interesting to go back now and say, let's track our friend sentiment as well and say, so how are you guys feeling about EOS now, guys? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> let's go <laughs> troll our friends. And then everybody can go troll us. And either we're going to get trolled or they will, or we all troll each right. other. But that's OK. I mean, anybody that, that joins us on the, on the YouTube channel, of course, troll away. Throw your comments and suggestions in the Please do. comments yeah. down below because, you know, at the end of the day, these are not necessarily opinions plus or minus in favor of buying or investing in the coin. These are just our observations about what we see technical and fundamentals. And, you know, if yeah. people who have stronger opinions than we do, please share because we're just observing what's going on in the market. And I'm, I'm very interested to see what other people think. And, you know, exactly. I, I would love it. Where would be mean to us. Just. Be honest and tell us what you think because right. we don't have a clean channel, but you know. Right, you know, be cool yourself, like, you like Fonzie. Yeah, like yeah. Fonzie's cool. Just be cool like Fonzie. But no, seriously, if there is somebody somebody listening to this who does have much more technical analysis or other versions uh, or can, you know, the other versions, <laughs> versions of the truth, right? Other versions of the truth. Things that we're missing, please let us know because this is what we can tell. And as far as I can tell in looking at this, putting your money in EOS now is basically gambling. So. If something, if you put money in it and it goes wrong, you have no one to blame for yourself. That's just yourself. your opinion, Uri. That is just my opinion. That is just my opinion. I, yeah. uh, and like I'm I said, not a I'm financial looking at the advisor. Technical chart. So, I, yeah. so here's, here's an interesting, fundamentally you're saying it's just gambling. Technical yes. chart says it's between a buy and a strong buy. So right. if I go on the pure technical side of it, I'd have to say buy. And you're going right. on the fundamentals and you're saying you can't buy. But if you, you have buy, my opinion, do I like it or not? I said thumbs down. Yeah. But if I'm just a pure play technical chartist, I'd say buy the coin. Right, right. Which does remind me, we should have an, on another version of these, we should talk more about like uh, charts and, and the technical analysis because I feel like there's a, there's a lot of people will be interested in that kind of subject. Uh, maybe that'll be a side, something else we do because that, that in itself is interesting to look at. Those are YouTube. certainly a more visual thing we'll need to do on, yes. on just YouTube. There's probably no benefit for our podcast listeners to... Uh, no. So listen, listen to, to me describing that. charts and pointing out to the, the highs and the lows. Right. If you yeah. can imagine. <laughs> we, we should, we'll set up a, like a separate webinar just for that, I think. So you can see a lot of visuals. Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, we can definitely follow up with that one. That, that's a great idea. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, uh, did you spend any Bitcoin, by the way? I didn't. I did not spend any Bitcoin. I did have conversations around uh, with some of the health companies I was chatting with yesterday about what they were doing with like blockchain technology. And it, it was interesting that most of them had not even thought about that. So it's, um, and they're, they are companies who are handling sensitive data. So it's, um, it's still interesting to see how like the, the market is still playing out in that one. So I know that's like a side, a side project, but no, I, I did not. Did I, did I tell you my restaurant experience where I, we, I asked the, the, the guy that, this guy was about 65. Did I tell you this yeah. one that I, we went in to ask if we could pay for dinner? Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't have enough change to pay you the difference. <laughs> yes, that's right. You mentioned that. Yeah. Because yeah. he wanted you to pay like a whole Bitcoin. Not yeah. I said, can you take Bitcoin? And he said, well, I don't have enough change to pay you. 
<laughs> the difference between like, you know, 5,000, whatever, 6,000 or whatever, 7,000, whatever the price was, and the dinner, which was about 150 US or whatever. <laughs> right. I wasn't expecting him to hand me $7,000, but not like I had a Bitcoin yeah. to give him, but I wasn't expecting right. him to give me $7,000, but. <laughs> He's gonna start just counting out. At least out he knew what it was though. I mean, you know, the guy yeah. was in his you know, mid 60s to 70s, you know, probably about 60, 65, something like that. Yeah. Nice chap um, and loved talking about it, but he didn't realize that there were Satoshis involved. Decimal. <laughs> it's probably better that way because then he may have said yes and then you actually would then have gone through that whole process with him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Great. Well, it's been uh, a very lively discussion with you tonight, Yuri. I don't know what, what you've been eating <laughs> for out. lunch today, but I love I it. Had, I had donuts. They were free donuts, so I had a donut. It must have been the Krispy Kremes. <laughs> that definitely was. Sugar Rush. Wow. Okay. <laughs> See you for the next Sugar Rush then, Yuri. Definitely. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening in today. Uh, to the moon. Until next time.